what I remember most is the togetherness, um, is the community, um, is the love, is the fish fries. We love fish fries here in Girl Heights. And I can remember uh, in my grandmother's backyard having a fish fry and uh, selling fish plates. And, uh, you know, it's nothing like a good old uh, piece of fish in the black pot. Um, so I remember that clearly. Uh, I remember at my dad's shop uh, getting uh, my hair done uh, on a, I would say probably every two week basis. And that was, um, you know, when the press and curl was out and, and we actually have been talking about this and uh, the price was $12.95 uh, to get you a press and curl. And then I remember when it went up to $14.95 for the first press and curl. So those were the, the times that I remember. Um, and then just different people coming into the, the beauty shop, different people coming into the barbershop, as you know, everybody from all walks of life um, coming to the shop and just listening to the conversations. Uh, but the, the community um, and just the, the togetherness of everyone um, is what I remember about Grill Heights. Well, I think it was a big festival. Uh, we would have uh, food and uh, uh, we always wrap the maypole and uh, different events, uh, games played and uh, that's, that's about it. But everybody had a part to participate in. Your town, like I said, it, it, it's always been, everybody knew everybody. And everybody would help anybody. My mom always used to plant a garden and, and she shared it with everybody. And, uh, and it was the same. I mean, like we didn't own a car, but we had neighbors that owned cars. So they could take us to the grocery store and didn't mind taking us to the grocery store. Right here, the creek, when it would rain, it was the little boy hole and the big boy hole. That's the Bride Creek. You know, it feeds off a of little sugar creek, big sugar creek. Yeah, big sugar creek comes down over there off North Trine, the sugar creek. And, and the tributary that comes right there is Bride Creek. You know, it all goes to the Catawba River. Or when it was right over there where the museum at, right? I'm just trying to give you a bear what I'm talking about. Well, 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 we, it was a little boy hole, that was for the peewee, and the big boy hole for the big boy. Well, when it would rain, it would rain, it would fill up to the banks. Man, we get on the banks. And even the, even the white kids from East Dover and Mouse Park, we all swim in it. See, that's where we grew up over here in Stumptown. We didn't know anything about the discourse between racial relationships unless we saw it on TV because we were surrounded with Coxwell. We were surrounded by whites. So we played with them, old curse. We played with them all day. Only thing separated us when we had to go to school and now the school was back together playing. So we, it wasn't that tense. And, you know, we had the kids stuff, you know, you know, we had, you could have that in a whole black community. You're going to have the kids showing their macho, you know what I mean? But as far as us using the, the words and racism, we didn't have that, man. Because we would jump in that creek and swim with just our underpants on. Greer Heights was a, uh, was a tight community. My grandmother on my father's side, she stayed in Greer Heights. She stayed mm, on the corner of Orange Street and, uh, and Fanny Circle. And, uh, it was just, it, it was a, it, it was, it was a great experience. Real Heights, everybody knew everybody, you know. It, and you could go from one house to the other where you could, you know, people didn't even lock their doors out in this, in this community, you know. That's how, that's how close it was. So for me, some of the fondest memories that I have of the Greer Heights community is always our community events. So National Night Out, Labor Day, which is kind of like the Greer Heights community reunion. Um, and also, honestly, just the people in general. Um, this is probably one of the most cohesive and prideful communities that I've ever been involved with. So in general, when I think about fondest memories, I just think about the people of this neighborhood in general. This is a what I like to call a generational community. So you have great grandmothers and grandmothers and their grandchildren, their great grandchildren who are still residing here. And so for me, I just don't think 
I would want any generation to lose out or even for the individuals who decide to come in and make Greer Heights their home. I would love for this to be a community of sustainability um, to where every family that walks within the streets of this neighborhood um, is assured and reassured that they are in a position to remain here. Honestly, we are a family. I don't even think the word community um, holds justice to us at all. Um, we are we are family. Um, we are always in a position to figure out as a whole how we can improve not just ourselves, um, but our surrounding areas as well. Uh, whenever there is some issue um, or something that we would love to combat, i.e. at one point in time, you know, we had high school dropout rates, you know, and now that is no longer an issue for us. But what became an issue was, well, now it's time for us to ensure that our college kids not only were they getting into college because we were there, but ensuring that we were funding them to go to college. And so the community has banded behind, you know, providing a variety of scholarships for our students and everything. And so for us, we are just really unique where I feel like we do a lot of things in-house. Um, we love our, our partners um, and, and our community partners. We love them dearly, but for the most part, we do a lot of things in-house. So I think that kind of separates us from a lot of other communities as well. Though on the weekends, that was when the community came out. So a lot of times I'd be like, hey, mama, I need to go. I want to go to the park, the park. I want to go to the park. All of the park, the park. And because there was a lot of activity over at the park. It was community led. It was, it was a place for us to go to do stuff. Um, I think some of my most fondest memories of being up on the park. I mean, just coming to meet people and, and seeing my friends and just doing stuff. I mean, just being, because I mean, our, my generation, we didn't have a lot of computer stuff. I mean, we just, we had to, you know, mama say, go outside and play. You had to, you had to make it work. So we didn't have this right here. So I think a lot of those memories, the fond memories that go, always go back to community, always go back to family, always go back to love, go, those things like that. So this ain't just a drug place. This ain't just a place where poor people are. It's not, that's not what this is. No, this, this is a, like I said, it's a diamond in the rough. It's, this is a, Beautiful community. It's got a rich history, um, a history that I think Charlotte needs to know. It needs to, just like we um, put accolades on John Myers, who helped to create Myers Park, we should do the same thing for Sam Billings.